it's Adam. Welcome to Tech Dive AV Club. And today we're in Movie Studio 16 Platinum, and we're going to talk about project settings. And we're going to go into the nitty gritty of the project settings a little bit because I think a lot of people kind of know they either don't know what any of these boxes do, or they know what all of these boxes do. Uh, but whatever person you are, uh, I'm going to try and make it to where you can kind of go from having no idea what to do with your project settings to having a pretty good idea what to do with your project settings in any given situation. So with that in mind, what I want you to know is that your project settings have everything to do with, you guessed it, your project. Your project has everything to do with what your primary source footage is. If you're using uh, primarily like a pre-rendered footage or footage ripped from YouTube, if you look at your properties for the footage, like this footage right here, if I right click and have properties, you can see some standard things about it. It's an SMT, uh, SMPTE non-drop frame, 29.97 uh, frames per second video, uh, it has uh, 48 hertz, 48,000 hertz sample rate. Uh, those kinds of things uh, influence what your video can possibly do, where the limits are. This is a 4K video. It is progressive footage. So a couple of things in your state. This kind of thing we need to talk about what some of these things mean because this is going to influence this. This is our project settings. So if you're primarily using footage that looks like this, your project settings need to match this. So what progressive means is progressive is your is is whether or not showing you the entire frame at once or if it's drawing the lines individually and then interlacing or mixing in the next frame of lines. So skipping a line drawing the lines up, then skipping a line and drawing the odd lines next in between and where that starts. Most of you probably don't have to deal with progressive, I mean, sorry, probably don't have to deal with interlaced footage anymore because that's gone for the most part. It's leaving anyway. If you're somebody who has to go to capture video and you are capturing some HDV video or DV video when you're, before you edit, uh, some of you are like, I've never seen that before. What is this? Uh, well, uh, that if you've been in video for more than 10 years, you know exactly what this is. Uh, but if you're using that, there's a really good chance you need interlaced settings. Uh, that just depends on what your camera is spitting out, and you can find that here. If you're not using that, though, there's a really good chance you're going to need progressive. You see it shows the pixel aspect ratio squared. Just remember this stuff, alpha channel, none. Okay, so now we got we know. We know a place to look for things. This is my camera's footage. You can see one of the big differences is this says XAVC. This is a special Sony AVC Kodak, uh, and and that's what my camera's pro producing. But again, you can see it. this is progressive, square. It's 4K. Uh, it can give you the time code attributes and things like that as well. So these are all super handy uh, things to know when you're picking project settings. So here, when I'm picking project settings, uh, you de you want something that matches what you're doing, right? So if I've got 4K. Uh, almost 30 frames a second, right? And that, that drop frames where uh, they used to squeeze the audio in. I don't know, I don't know what they do with it nowadays in, in modern codecs. It's kind of archaic why we don't have uh, a full 30 frames on every codec anymore. But there's a reason. Uh, a lot of times they squeeze extra information like audio information in that extra frame. Um, but this is where you get your frame width and height. That is your 4K video, if you have 1080p, it needs to be 1920 by 1080p, but again, don't just type it in. Match your camera settings, match your primary project settings. Whatever you're primarily using, you need to match that uh, for your project settings. If you're gonna upscale it or downscale it in the render, that's a different story. Just try and match what you're using for the project settings. So, uh, again, don't mess with this, right? If this is what you have, match it. Frame rate. NTSC. Mine says NTSC because I'm based in the U.S. The U.S. and Japan uses NTSC, but uh, the rest of the world uses what's called PAL. And so if your camera is shooting in PAL, you need to select a PAL setting. If your camera is not shooting in PAL, then you need if it's shooting in NTSC, you need to select an NTSC setting. Don't fight it. Just choose what your camera is. Uh, don't worry about stereoscopic mode right now. That's... Um, that's more about how to use the 3D effects. It just leave it off. And uh, for the uh, full scale rendering quality, what you're actually going to want to select is best, most likely, unless there's a reason why you don't want it to do best. Maybe you want smaller final sizes and stuff like that. Let's look. Let's get away and let's look at why you're going to choose best. When you go to project and you go to render as, and it gives you the more complicated render options. You're not just going to make movie. You're actually doing render as stuff. And you go to uh, your MP4s and things like that. If you 
unless you're making a custom one, if you go to customize templates, you can see something right here. If you go to project, it'll go video rendering quality, use project settings. So how good of a final render you have, most of the time, unless you've custom set it yourself in your own pre-saved template, will just use the project settings. So if you want it to render out in the best settings, you're gonna need to have best selected here in your project settings. Uh, so de-interlace method, I'm gonna have none selected because I have a progressive footage as we talked about. Again, if you're moving, if you're trying to move from de-interlacing to interlaced, sorry, from interlaced footage to de-interlaced footage, then this is important. You're going to need to see what works best. That's something to toggle. If you're noticing those lines, you should not notice those lines. So if you're noticing them, you need to select a different the interlace method. Um, you can make sure that all projects start with these settings if you have this box selected right here. Uh, in the audio, some quick guide to that, if you're doing 5.1 surround sound, you just need to select that and apply it. But if you're not, don't. There's no reason to make it more complicated uh, to render out a 5.1 surround sound. It won't just instantly make your project better. If you're, if most people have stereo or mono sound, but stereo is the most common, so stereo is probably where you're gonna wanna keep it. Uh, if you're curious, this this uh, the 2.1 where a subwoofer is involved, that is handled by your speakers. Your speaker and your audio drivers will handle that 2.1 subwoofing sound. Now 5.1 will actually give you, you know, that's that that point one is the subwoofer. Uh, so that that accounts that right here. But don't worry, that it's just stereo. It doesn't mean you'll lose any subwoofer ability or anything if you're doing anything with music. Um, so 48 for you can go higher in Vegas Pro. That's one of the limitations to movie studios. However, 48,000 uh, 48, hertz is a very standard high-quality audio. Uh, you're rarely going to need more than that unless you're doing some uh, awesome mastering of a band or recording music or something. Uh, that's where you're going to want that super high fidelity stuff. Uh, but for the most part, this is plenty good fidelity for uh, a video video that typically audio that typically accompanies video. Uh, this is what's called CD quality 44, and this is like broadcast quality. So this is plenty. Your bit depth, uh, you can have a higher bit depth selected if you would like to get more info rendering out with your audio. But a lower bit depth is fine as long as you're not hearing the problem. And uh, you can have resample set to best to make sure your audio comes out the best. But if you're having file size problems, you'll get a slight improvement improvement without much quality lost if it's set at good that's that'll be minor differences what your ruler is is how you can uh, see what you're doing this ruler matches my project exactly which is maybe what you want to do or maybe if you're doing something just audio you might just want time or seconds or something like that so you can uh, uh, work on your audio project but remember where it had the SMTP drop that's why it has this selected it's because when it says ruler that's this down here and when I scroll in you can actually see that's the that semicolon that semicolon means drop frame and some fun facts this uh, let's go ruler uh, sorry I whistled um, this ruler if we go to non drop frame and hit apply and hit OK. Now you can see that it's got a colon. Colon means non drop frame. Semicolon means drop frame or drop as well. A lot of times it'll shorten to. Uh, and you can change the ruler start time. Uh, when again, your ruler is just your timeline down here. It's just where you can see how long everything takes. Uh, so this is how you can change some of the settings for your interaction with it. This won't change things in the final render. This will just change how you interact with your project. Uh, this is also, I would um, I mentioned in the pro tutorial, if you know more about this setting, I would love to hear more about it. This is how you can do kind of a metronome for uh, audio recording and stuff like that. Uh, this is something I haven't messed with that much, so I'm not going to pretend to be the authority here. But uh, if you know anything more about using this for uh, audio recording and using this as a metronome, that would be great. Let me know in the comments below. So uh, that is, in general, what's going on here, right here in the summary this is where you can put some metadata information that may export with your project I never use this because my clients never are doing anything super fancy with it and I for my own projects I'm just uploading to YouTube so this is pretty useless however if you're making a CD that will have metadata that passes to everybody or if you're creating something uh, that will be passed around to a broader set of folks this may be a great place to put some information um, 
here to manage project files this is where some of your recorded like your audio recordings and stuff can go and this is where your pre-render files will go let me show you what pre-rendering is real quick if you have a highlighted section that's just one frame let me scroll back up. if you have a highlighted section right click on it you can actually selectively pre-render video this will let you render a track that will temporarily replace your uh, video right there and it lets you see more true uh, what your effects and layering and everything is going to look like in your final render. The second you make any changes that pre-render goes away. Uh, the reason you may want to change that if you're running out of space or you have a faster disk you want this to come from or something like that you can actually change where those go with this right here. Uh, scratch disk that's where you would you would uh, want this to go as well if you just wanted a quick place for this to pop on and off if you have a specific drive in mind if you don't have any drive in mind don't touch it there's no reason to if it ain't broke don't fix it that is a pretty I think in-depth guide to project properties in Movie Studio 16 Platinum. It's a little different for Pro, so if you're on Vegas Pro, totally check out my Pro tutorial for this. Uh, but this is the majority of everything you're gonna need to know. Uh, so again, last note, this is what you're primarily working with. When you render, this is what your final project's gonna be, what you select here. And so having something that's honest, just be honest about the footage you're working on don't try and lie don't try and tell it it's 4k when it's not and stuff it, it just it just wants to help you right and then if you want to make it lesser than 4k you can go to 720p 24 frames a second and stuff like that and the render will do that for you it'll take your your project and it'll move it to the new settings and that's that's up resing and down resing and things like that that's where that happens uh, and that may be a good idea maybe a bad idea uh, but that's a topic for another video but your project settings just need to be what your most common media is so this has been uh, project settings in movie studio 16 platinum it is an in-depth one so I, I know this is a little bit boring because it's just numbers and uh, and not fun to name things like progressive scan and things like that but things that I hope can help you out as you're doing more complicated projects in the future if you're looking for simpler videos or you want some more explanation on these things let me know if you're looking for more complicated videos and you want more nitty gritty let me know in the comments below thank you guys for reaching a thousand subs I'm excited to get more videos out to you this video was selected because somebody bought or subscribed to something through my affiliates link and that helps me out a ton and if you do that let me know and I will custom make a tutorial for you this one was suggested uh, by that user so thank you guys so much for watching like if this video helped you out subscribe if you're looking for more I'll see you next time